going to start today with a question. What do you do when people just make you mad? Do you do something passive aggressive? Do you just maybe lash out at them, yell at them, do something to get even? Uh, take a second and write in the comments things that you do when you get angry, when you feel that somebody's wronged you. And that's where we're hanging out today in uh, Wednesday Wisdom in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Uh, he's talking about what we should do when people just make us angry. It happens every day, doesn't it? Somebody cuts us off in traffic or maybe we don't get what we're supposed to when we paid for a product and we just get mad and we want to do something uh, maybe to get back at that person, to get revenge. And that's exactly, exactly what Peter's telling us not to do. He says, don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Pay them back with a blessing instead. Pay them back with a blessing. That sounds so awesome, but it's so hard to do, isn't it? I mean, we would love to say, hey, I am super Christian Chuck. I can go out there and when somebody does something wrong to me, I turn around and do the nicest thing I could for them and not being sarcastic about it. But in all honesty, that's not reality in my life. That's one of the most difficult things to do is just to take a step back and put things in perspective when somebody wrongs you. And I think the way that Peter wrote this uh, points out that he knows that. I noticed this is another one of those times where uh, shortly after he says this, he quotes this verse of scripture. It's actually from Psalms. And he does this, I think, maybe because he knows it's hard. He knows it's difficult. So what he's doing is exactly what we should do. He's going back to something he knows. He knows what God has told him in the past and how to act in these situations. And he's putting that back fresh in his head. I think that's a great uh, example of Bible study. That if we stay in the Word constantly, we can constantly have something to pull on when we have those situations that just don't go the way we want them to. Stuff is just out of our control and people are freaking us out. But we can put it in perspective when we frame it the way the Bible does and say, hey, hey, we've got a bigger goal here. We keep our eye on the big picture, not the little moment and maybe figure out a way to turn that into a blessing. I know uh, one of my friends once told me a story that, you know, every day on the way to work, uh, people were cutting him off and he was just getting mad. You know, they'd turn right in front of him and all that kind of stuff. And he uh, decided to change his perspective by saying, how can I turn this into a blessing for these people? And he started to intentionally let people in, you know, like when he's in the long line of traffic, see how many people he could bless by letting them in in front of him. And, and that's what it's all about. It's, it's working on being humble, putting the other people in front of us, treating them the way we want to be treated. Uh, verse 9 finishes up right here. It says, that's what God called you to do, and he will grant you his blessing. So while we might think we're getting the shaft when we're here on earth, eventually our good deeds will catch up with us. And that's... That's why we're here, is to influence this world in a good way, in a way that's a little different than everybody else. That will make us stand out as Christians, which in turn advances the gospel. Because when people see something different in you, they're going to seek it out and ask, why? Why are you so pleasant when somebody screws you over or, or wrongs you? Why are you so pleasant? Why do you turn around and do nice things for that person. And those are the things as Christians that set us apart. So think about that uh, this week. It's just how can we act a little bit differently when people uh, insult us or do things that make us mad? How can we act in a way that blesses them? What are those things that we can do to bless them? Uh, IndyCar has the next two weeks without races, but let me tell you, IndyCar ministry is going to be busy. I leave tomorrow morning to head up to Road America for the first uh, MX-5 cup, uh, cup race of the year, 
and uh, I'm looking forward to that. Spending time with that crowd is, is always awesome. They're great people. And then next week, there's a standalone Road to Indy race uh, at Mid-Ohio, which we'll be going to. And then IndyCar is back right after that. So I just want to keep you filled in where we're going. Uh, probably doing some updates from the track, keeping you in the loop of what's going on. And as always, we thank you for your support, both prayerfully and financially. Have a blessed week.